Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the feat Crusher. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I, um, yeah you English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Grusher is a feat from Dodge Golden of everything. It's one of the newfangled damage type feats. So there's this one, there's a piercing and a slashing one, I'm pretty sure. Another yeah. slashing one. I think there's a piercing one. Yeah, piercer. there's piercer and slasher, yes. Yeah, nailed it. Uh, this is very simple. Increase your strength of con by one to a max of 20. Lovely. If that's all you need, that's all you need. That's great. If you're ever getting from an odd to an even, it's excellent. I will preface every single feat that gives you a plus ability modifier to say, if you have an odd ability score and you care about that ability score and this improves it by one, that's as good as an ability score improvement 95% of the time. So excellent start. Next, once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, you can move it five feet to an unoccupied space provided the target is no more than one size larger than you. If you're medium, you can move large creatures. If you're large, you can move huge creatures. If you're huge, you can move gargantuan creatures, etc., etc. Finally, when you score a critical hit that deals bludgeoning damage to a creature, attack rolls against that creature are made with advantage until the start of your next turn. And this is all of Crusher. It's a neat little feat. It's, uh, I don't know if that's super simple, but it's got some interesting things going on there. I particularly like the uh, that last bit. I don't know it's how... It's pretty cool. Well, yeah, no, I'd say that is pretty useful, but uh, I... I like critical hits, and I like free stuff that happens as a result of them. So, bonus. I think Crusher is a victim to the advantage mechanic in that I think advantage being a binary that doesn't stack very well makes this feat a little bit worse, especially because it's crit-based. Crit-based builds often already want lots of ways to turn advantage on at will. This doesn't stack well with those. If this, you have like you do this with like reckless attack on a barbarian, maybe, and then you're trying to get your crits off of your reckless attacking, and then when you crit with regu- with a reckless attack, your next round you don't have to. Sure, that seems okay. I really wish that there was an additional. I really wish they were more open to more ways to provide advantage. When I say advantage, bonuses to hit than just the binary advantage. I would have loved this game like d8s or d4s or some boon to attacking beyond just advantage. Still, with just advantage, it's pretty good. A lot of characters that aren't aimed at specific crit fishing builds are going to find that it's just incidentally decent every once in a while. One in every 20 hits, you get advantage on attacks against the thing for a little bit. Sure. And it's not even specifically your attack rolls. It's all attack rolls against that creature made with advantage. Mm-hmm. So all your friends get advantage on those attack rolls too. That's just still great. Once per turn, whenever you hit things with the, the bludgeoning damage, you can move it. Where do you think this goes? All right. Now, I did want to get into this. Um, We were not kind to the spell Booming Blade. And we got a lot of comments. Oh, and crap, I love this. Yep, hit me with it. A, a lot of those comments had to do with Booming Blade pairing well with the Crusher feet. Hypothetically. This, uh-huh. Hypothetically, yes. Conceivably, let's go, let's go through the play pattern. You're a character with the Crusher feet, meaning you're using a bludgeoning weapon. At best, right. you're probably using a maul. It's the maul. 2d6 bludgeoning weapon. On the character that has proficiency with a maul, which is a martial weapon, so you have to be you that, that proficiency is not given out willy nilly. But looking at like hex blades and stuff, we're looking at fighters, barbarians that get it up through a feet. You could use crusher to move the thing you hit with the booming blade attack five feet away from you. That will not proc the booming blade damage. The creature has to willingly no. move to proc the bloom booming blade damage. I no, I didn't. I didn't think that's what they were going with it. Um... I know. Okay, go ahead. So now we've put the creature in a situation where it has to move, hypothetically, to attack you, assuming it doesn't have reach weapons, assuming that it doesn't have ranged options, assuming all of those things. That seems like a reasonable use case, right? Mm -hmm. What you're forgoing is an extra attack. What you're forgoing is using the multi-attack features that you want to be using. And I don't think that trade-off is going to be worth it almost ever. I think most oftentimes the builds that are using mauls that want to use Crusher, that want to take advantage of the crit opportunities, they really want to be attacking as often as humanly possible. Having to... Having to... get a, Getting an extra D8, 2D8, 3D8 damage, possibly after pushing something you hit with a maul, that does not seem amazing to me. You could do some sentinel things with like a quarter staff, maybe if you have a reach weapon that's dealing bludgeoning damage. Your goal is to set up a zone, and booming blade still isn't necessarily better than just attacking again. 
almost ever. So I think I still stand pretty firmly that Booming Blade isn't exceptional on any of those builds, even with Crusher. I think you have to jump through so many hoops to get an outcome that's very, at, like, at best comparable to an extra attack. And I don't think you want comparable to an extra attack one characters that are getting that extra attack anyway. I don't think that's worth it. I think you can do better than that. Yeah, I kind of wish I had read those comments more carefully now. A lot of people seem pretty passionate about this. Uh, but yeah, what you're saying now makes a lot of sense to me. Hmm. Very but, specific builds I could see it coming together. I think yeah. the, to make up one more quick note about that, I definitely, the Blade Singers get to make an extra attack cantrip, which gives them basically super extra attack with Booming Blade. That's a very big upside that that build goes on that character. So you take Booming Blade on characters that get bonus action cantrip attacks. Or not cantrip attacks, bonus action cantrip cast. That's very good. Um, Should have mentioned that there. Mentioning it here, but we're not talking about cantrips. We're talking about Crusher. Yeah. On specifically the Booming Blade characters, eh. I don't love it. It's fine. It has a lot of the problems Booming Blade still has. I don't want to be... I think characters with Crusher want to make multiple attacks. You want to take advantage of that crit range. You want to take advantage of other elements of it. So if, if we're... Let's let's say we're not using it with the Booming Blade scenario. We do or are making more attacks with it. Where else do we use it then? Where else do we use this free push? I don't know, but uh, like hearing you say that, if I've got extra attacks and I use a Booming Blade to push up out of my range of the extra attack... The, I feel it it uh, did something worse for me. Yeah, you me. probably wanted to be within five feet of it a lot yeah. of the time. Ah, well. <laughs> it sounded so good when people were commenting, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more comments here. Mm -hmm. the, again, if the builds are making a single attack roll, if you're a level four character specifically, with Crusher and a Maul and Booming Blade, it is an upgrade. At fifth level immediately, on every single character that gets extra attack, it is no longer an upgrade. It is a strict, not a strict downgrade, but it is at best a side grade, usually a downgrade over just hitting it again. In the case where we are hitting it again, I think there are some cases where I don't hate pushing things for free. The fact that this can be a free disengage means you can just whack something, push your five feet, whack something else, push your five feet, and then bail. That seems like a great case scenario as opposed to having to use the disengage action. If you get two attacks and only one thing in range of you and you're about to die, you can go, great, I swing wildly at it twice, pray that I hit. If I do hit, push it back five feet and then run. That's a perfectly reasonable outcome. On reach weapons, being able to knock it back five feet, knock it back five feet again, and then move also is pretty cute if you got a reach bludgeoning weapon. Those are all cases where I think you can do some neat get out of dodge free kind of stuff. I think beyond that, this could be a neat tool to push things into area of effect damage again, where something crudges through, it gets to you, you're the frontline bulwark, and you go back into the blade barrier, and you just, you know, home run that thing directly back into the 8d10 uh, swirling cone of death, plus your 2d6 plus number, giant plus 10 mod to great weapon master and all that fun stuff, right? There are some builds that'll be, you'll be the world's largest ping pong paddle and just smashing things back into the walls of fire and stuff. That'll be pretty fun. All right, what if um, you got two creatures two enemies standing right next to each other mm -hmm. you smack one with your maul push them back five feet with a booming blade but oh wait no booming takes your whole action attack yes yes, attack. yes 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 never mind never mind that's the problem oh, that's where yeah. booming blade is not good that's why yeah. it goes on rogues that's why it goes on blade singers because they get the bonus action cantrip cast i think elders knights get a similar thing it's not probably that good on elders knights still but that's fine <laughs> Well, commenters, I tried. Sorry, I've let you down. Uh, but, yeah. Tell Sam why he's wrong here. Sure. I'm Listen, I'm down to read these comments again. <laughs> Hit me with it. I'm. There might be things I'm missing. There's, again, probably a few niche builds where you can do things with Crusher and Booming Blade. I don't see it being that usable, specifically because I think there's clearer and easier ways to weaponize Booming Blade, and there's clearer and easier ways to weaponize Crusher. And if you want to get Crusher for all it's worth, you really want to care about that crit condition, and if you care about the crit condition, you really care about making multiple attacks. So this is all, like, the more attacks you make, the more times you're critting. The more attacks you're attacking with advantage, the more times you're critting. Barbarians are good at both of those things. Fighters are good at both of those things. This seems to me like a home run feat for those kinds of characters, even Paladins with Mauls. That's where I would imagine this feat to go. I think it pretty... It competes, unfortunately, with Great Weapon Master in a lot of ways, which I don't love. It competes with Sentinel. It competes with a lot of very good, like, known quantity builds of I stand my ground with a giant weapon in the front line and lock things down, or I hit things like a bus, or I do X, Y, or Z. This competing with all those, I don't I don't love. The fact that you get an ASI is pretty handy for that. It means you can say out the gate, I'm going to take a 17 strength, 
on just like that's my highest that I can possibly get with my um Quimpire or whatever. And this can be a first feat you get to give you that 18 strength and then set up your next feats. Or this can just be something that you take it as your second feat to get the 18 strength in the mid game and feel like your mod still goes up. Those are both real cases I think you should consider whenever you're starting a build. Crusher fitting into that to make your ability score improvement a little bit easier, I think is pretty pretty reasonable. All right. Um let's see. We covered all the the basics here. There's the Ability score upgrade, the uh, the push five feet thing, and the uh, the crit thing. Um, it's not a very complicated feat. Say? No, but it's got it's got a couple of different moving parts. I like it. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, what do you rate this as? Uh, I like Rusher a lot. I think this is probably just a three. It's a perfectly reasonable melee frontline feat to get. I like that the. I like that the feat gives marshals a way to support allies because it takes your crits and makes them everyone's crits. Everyone gets to have a good time whenever mm. you're having a good time beating the crap out of things. Features that do that, I think, are very healthy for the game. It'll make more people get excited about your big moments because they'll be everyone's big moments, but just the most yours. And that's kind of a lot of what D&D is, is figuring out how to get everyone to have a really cool, spectacular moments and to shine brightly and have the spotlight while empowering everyone else to also sort of have their moments in the spotlight, right? d and a game with eight main characters at the table at a given time, so it's hard to necessarily sometimes get everyone to feel like they're always doing cool things. Feats like Crusher, I think, help everyone feel that way a lot of the time. And that's great. I think this is a perfectly reasonable feat to exist. Again, my one critique is I would probably want the advantage to not be advantage. I'd probably want it to be a different kind of modifier, so it would scale with advantage. It would work better on the Barbarian builds. It would work better on Crit Fishing Fighters. It would look better on Samurais. That kind of stuff. That's not how it is, though, and how it is currently is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, advantage is fine with me. I, uh... Ooh, I'm inclined to give this a four because I, uh, mostly because of that crit that thing. But, huh? I don't think the shove's that good. I don't think the crit's happening all that often. No, so. the shove is not amazing. But the, uh, yeah, the crit thing, uh, maybe specifically for a multi attacking crit fishing character. Well, then. That's using then a bludgeoning weapon. Five. Yeah. Yeah, that's using a bludgeoning yes. weapon. That is a uh, that's a taller bar than it necessarily looks too. You you do have to make sure if you are doing the multi tech fishing thing, you're not using like long bows are really good at that sometimes. Great swords are great at that sometimes. Balls aren't necessarily the default. They can be. If that's where you're going. Crusher keeping crusher in mind makes moles I think a lot more interesting. But there are comparative options that you can take instead of this in those crit fishing builds. That you know you don't need to take this. You can though. It'll be good. Now that's uh, but yeah, maybe for. That specific character I laid out, this could be a four or a five, but eh, for general use, I guess I'll agree with your three. I think oh, it's yeah. entirely reasonable. I also think, yeah. I will quickly note, people hear me say three and go, oh, he thinks it's bad. This isn't broken. or No, threes mean your DM doesn't have to worry about it. This is going to be a reasonable thing on most characters. It's not going to be the greatest thing in the world, and there's probably more powerful options than this that people can take. And that is absolutely where Crusher lands. Yeah, that's that's how I feel when I, when I hear you say three. Right. All right. Well, that was Crusher. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you will. Uh, until then, thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.